Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. You know what time it is. Update time once again in MCOC and I am back with the patch notes for September. There is a ton of stuff to go through. September is absolutely packed so let's jump right in. Starting off with the newest champions that are entering the game in September and the first of those is the Summoner's Choice champion himself, Gladiator. Kabam has been showing off bits and pieces of Gladiator on the official Twitch streams for the past couple months I think. Very excited to see what everybody thinks about him. I feel like the bar is, is higher. The expectations for a Summoner's Choice Champion are much higher. And I think we have Hercules to thank for that. But if you're expecting another Hercules, uh, th think again. Uh, the second champion is probably already in your roster, and that is Classic Iron Man. Iron Man is an OG. He was with the game when it launched in 2014, and now he has been given a complete and total overhaul. So he's got a new portrait, he's got a new like visual look, uh, brand new animations, brand new special attacks, and his kit has been completely torn down and rebuilt from the ground up. So for all intents and purposes, he is essentially a, a new champion, right? And best of all, as they say here, he's already most likely in your roster. So the new and improved Iron Man, as it says here, will replace the original Iron Man in the game automatically when you update to 41.1 in September. September. So it's basically like getting a brand new champion for free. You probably have seen a bunch of CCP folks over the past couple weeks rank theirs up. You know, they allowed us to kind of tease this stuff uh, on Twitter, uh, but those weren't just jokes. Like, this Iron Man, he's like very good. Um, and his prestige, I think, is in the top 10 as a six star. Those rank ups were actually because people want to rank up uh, Iron Man, and I'm sure that you will as well. Number two, let's talk about the Paragon Gauntlet. And first things first, this is not what you might think it is, seeing that word gauntlet. It's not like the Grandmaster's Gauntlet here. It's not permanent endgame content. So this is going to serve as the Paragon difficulty for event quests going forward. And the way it's going to work is that they will have taken all the six bosses from the EQ, put them on one path, one right after another, and you have to get through them with only three champs allowed on your team. So definitely an increased uh, amount of complexity there and difficulty. You won't be able to bring a specific specific counter to every boss. You're going to have to pick and choose, play around the nodes. Uh, so this was an idea that was suggested by several folks, myself included, way back months ago in the CCP when the team started talking about adding Paragon difficulty. And the general feeling was, you know, EQ is already a huge chore. And if you just copy and paste, you know, the difficulty and, and add nodes and update, you know, increase the health and attack values, it's going to be incredibly boring. So I really like this idea. It's six fights for one difficulty. Not sure what the rewards are going to look like for this, but I think it should uh, it should feel a lot less like a chore to finish this than it does for the lower difficulties. Number three, also in Not A Gauntlet news, we have next month's side event, which is called the Gladiator's Gauntlet. And normally I don't point out side events in these update videos, but given that it is called Gauntlet, and we also have the Paragon Gauntlet, and we have the Grandmaster's Gauntlet already in the game, it can get very confusing. So this is just a normal side event. It's going to operate similar to side events that you've seen in the past. You're going to get a key to enter from solo events. You do the highest difficulty possible that you can, and then they'll hand out you know the typical monthly CAV crystals that they've been giving out for several months now. And then there are solo objectives for finishing you know a bunch of higher levels. So I think they're giving out you know yet another six star awakening gem some profile picks that kind of stuff so just kind of again level setting expectations here this is not another piece of end game content this is just next month's side event number four and this is a big one ascension is finally coming to the game in september this is a feature that has been talked about and theorized about for quite a bit over the past like year maybe almost uh, so you'll be able to ascend your 4-star, 5-star, and 6-star champions, and this amounts to giving them a significant increase to their base stats, so their attack and their health is going to be beyond their previous limits. So uh, again, uh, just kind of a refresher on how Ascension is going to work. They did talk about this in last month's Twitch stream, uh, but that's not available on demand. So there's going to be a new resource available called Primordial Dust. There are going to be two types, Tier 1 and Tier 2. The Tier 1 Dust is going to work for 4-star and 5-star champions, and the Tier 2 Dust is going to work for 6-star. So let's take a look at the power levels here for just a second, because I want you to understand you know, exactly how these champions are going to look when they're ascended. So 
uh, you can see these red lines here. So at the far right end of the chart here, you see this blue uh, solid line. So this is a rank five ascended uh, four star champion. It's going to be roughly equivalent uh, to a rank four regular five star champion. Uh, similarly, this green solid line up here, this is a rank five five star champion. And if you ascend that, it's going to be roughly equivalent to a rank three six star champion. So you know, if you're pushing in battlegrounds and you have a, you know, you're struggling to get a bunch of rank threes in your roster, you know, pick a five star that you think is really going to help you, and it'll be about the same as a rank three six star. And then if we get up into the, you know, the higher accounts, a a rank five ascended six star is going to be roughly equivalent to a rank three seven star. So uh, now ascension is permanent; you cannot undo it. It's not like a relic where you can just pick and choose as you want. Once you choose a champion to ascend, they are ascended and that's it. Um, they're also going to give us enough primordial dust in an in-game message sometime in September to uh, perform your first ascension of a 4 or 5 star. So they are not giving out the tier 2 primordial dust right away. I also don't think this is going to happen like when the patch goes live. So if you don't see this message, you know, first thing in September, uh, don't panic. I think they're going to send it out sometime like, you know, in in the first week or the second week. The primordial dust will be available through the caps enlistment event which we will talk about next. I think the majority of players uh, are probably going to be ascending like Magic or Quake because those champions are not available as six stars and frankly will probably never be made available as six stars. Um, I myself would rather spoon my eyes out than than have to play Quake again. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of torn myself between Magic and and Labtron and I <laughs> I know I know Labtron isn't like a good champion but he's also unavailable as a six star. Uh, and it'd just be a fun, a fun first choice, I think. Be sure to let me know in the comments below who you are going to be making as your first ascension. I'm very interested, you know, like I said, I, I think a lot of people are going to be going with Magic or Quig, but I have seen a bunch of people in my streams and in the Discord, you know, talk about just ascending their favorite champions or like ascending an Aegon and working on Abyss, for example. So really curious to see who you want to ascend and what your reasoning for it. So be sure to leave me a comment below letting me know. All right, number five, let's talk about the Caps Enlistment event since we just talked about it as it relates to Ascension. So this is going to be an event similar to like Summoner Engagement or Summoner Advancement. I think it's going to be a solo event. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it feels like it should be a solo event if they're giving out a Primordial Dust. Um, so it's going to last for one month, and you'll probably earn the rewards just for doing stuff that you will be doing naturally. So playing War, playing AQ, Battlegrounds, Incursions. Um, no more info available at this time. However, this is a bit concerning. Gifting Enlistment Crystals. Uh, that, I definitely, I definitely don't like the sound of that. I don't have any further information on that, but... If this, if this event is going to turn into just, you know, gift an endless amount of, of crystals to each other and then ascend every champion that you have, uh, this is going to be DOA for me. So we'll see. Uh, I am going to, you know, take a wait and see approach on this. Hopefully it's not as bad as I'm, as I'm thinking, but I see, I see gifting and it just like triggers this like, like fight or flight response in me, I think. So we'll see what happens with that. Number six, let's jump back up to the top here and talk again about incursions. So the changes that they made to incursions as part of the August side event are going to be permanent going forward. So that includes things like the hacks lasting for 99 rooms, also includes, I believe, the shortened cooldown period for your team as well. So uh, for me personally, these changes instantly make the mode more appealing to run on a weekly basis. You know, Incursions is a very good source of gold if you run it every week, but there's really no reason to. It's kind of a pain to do, but with these permanent changes coming, I think that I will probably want to do an Incursions run once every week. So, uh, and an update to the Incursion store is also coming. I think this was announced uh, back in July or at the start of August. I can't really remember. Um, one of the updates to the store includes a seven star Incursions crystal. And my understanding is that the champions in that crystal, or at least some of the champions in that crystal, are going to be exclusive to it. So there will be there will be champions in the seven star incursions crystal that you will not be able to get out of the base pool for the, the time being. So save up those artifacts uh, and get ready to run those incursions every week. 
Number seven, the rebalancing updates for future Ant-Man and Cassie Lang will be live in the game with the September update. If you are unfamiliar with what is changing with these two champions, I'm pretty sure there is a post over on the official forums detailing everything. It includes some major bug fixes for each of them, uh, which we will cover in the section below. If you're looking for some good future Ant-Man content, I highly recommend my buddy B. McG. And if you're looking for some Cassie Lang gameplay, my friend and alliance mate Bittersteel has some great stuff, including a Cassie guide up on his channel which i would very much encourage you to check out i'll put the links to their channels in the description below last but not least is next month's list of bug fixes and improvements now normally i only cover like two or three of these a month but there are a lot of very interesting ones for september so we are going to cover a few more starting with this one the striker visual update so it says to improve champion versus striker clarity we have updated strikers in combat with a new blue ethereal visualization treatment i haven't seen how this looks yet i imagine it looks similar to how when you fight a defender with a linked node up they have that like pulsating purple glow on them i'm guessing it kind of looks like that what i thought would have been cool is if the striker looked like the relic itself like that that silver look with like the blue glowing lights so uh, you know, just, you know, differentiating between the champion and the striker is probably good to have, especially when your champion and the striker are the same. Like when you have like a, like a gambit and you fire off, you know, a five hit combo with gambit and then gambit runs in for gambit and does a combo and then gambit runs back in and continues the combo it just looks kind of goofy. So I'm glad that they are, you know, visually distinguishing between those two. Next one let's talk about is this one here, Cassie Lang special one, no longer whiffs when chained, chained with her heavy attack, uh, this is a huge problem for a lot of people. I know in my alliance and other uh, war alliances, uh, we have given up deaths because of the whiff. Uh, so this is being fixed. This actually prevented me from ranking up my Cassie. She's sitting at rank three, and I wanted to take her up, but I just couldn't, you know, couldn't commit the resources with this whiffing in place. So now that this is being fixed, I'll probably at least take her up to rank four. All right, next one I want to talk about is a very interesting one. Fixed an issue with strikers incorrectly interacting with Hercules and absorbing man's stun mechanics. So let's kind of unpack this for a minute. So when you use a striker, the defender is left stunned afterward, right? And up until now, the game, when it comes to Hercules and Carl, has been treating this as an actual stun effect, even though it's not technically a stun because it works on a stun immune opponent, right? You use a striker on a stun immune opponent, they are still left stunned after the striker ends. So going forward when it comes to these two champions, the stun will still work as it does today off the striker, uh, but it will be kind of be treated as its own unique effect. So what does it actually mean for Herc and Carl? So Hercules gains a feat of strength when he uses a heavy attack on a non-stunned opponent. And for Carl, he gains a ton of additional crit when he heavy cancels into a special attack. So technically, this is a buff for both of these champions because going forward, if you heavy attack with Herc out of a striker, it's going to count for his feats of strength. If you use a striker with Carl and then heavy and then cancel that heavy into a special, it's going to give him that increased crit rate. So, you know, Hercules is getting a buff like what a time to be alive, right? <laughs> okay, here's another really interesting one. Fixed an issue with Juggernaut's unblockable icon remaining after all unstoppable effects are removed. Uh, I think this was brought up to me by one of my old alliance mates. So the general idea here is that if Juggernaut was inflicted with a non-damaging debuff while his unblockable passive was there, it would remove the unstoppable effects, but it would not remove the unblockable, and the result is that he would be permanently unblockable for the rest of the fight. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely being fixed. We talked about fixing issues for Cassie Lang and Ant-Man as part of their rebalance. Uh, so here's one of them. Fixed an issue with Cassie Lang's taunt, reducing opponent attack by too much. Cassie Lang with that taunt up is very tanky, and as it turns out, a little bit too tanky. I think the number was... Um, with the Ant-Man Relic equipped, her taunt was reducing attack by like 90%. So she could essentially just, you know, tank a ridiculous amount of damage 
and not take any any health loss so that will be fixed as well fix an issue with aw defenders not being able to enter a queue uh, that's helpful if you like to use those same champs in two places last but not least fixed an issue with viv special 2 not connecting with the opponent when used to special intercept no surprise i was the one who reported that one after i had this happen to me in a battlegrounds fight I sent the video to the team and they fixed that. ton of bugs. If you saw one that I didn't uh, talk about specifically in here, uh, you can just pause the video and take a look. But that's going to do it for September. Like I said, it is a packed month. Let me know what you are most excited about. If you are ranking up your buffed Iron Man, let me know. If you are excited about testing out Gladiator, what do you guys think about the Paragon Gauntlet being the new difficulty? And of course, as I mentioned earlier, please let me know in the comments below who you are join going to ascend as your first four or five star champion when we get that Primordial Dust next month. So folks, that's going to do it. If you enjoyed this, please let me know by hitting that like button and be sure to subscribe for more content. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>